Welcome to the Witchy Work Wishes podcast, a place to find your weekly inspiration for bringing your personal witchcraft practice into your business, work, and office. Welcome to Witchy Work Wishes. I am your host, Charlene, and you're joining me today for episode number 16, all about in bulk. Uh, today's episode will include a quick history on it, how it's honored in the witchy community, and then how we can bring some of the elements of in bulk into our work, office, and business. I always like to start with three things I did over the weekend to help with my witchcraft practice. And the first was um, that I was finally able to finish my 2023 goals. I did this with the guidance of the amazing Super New Moon. This was our first new moon of 2023. So I really took the time to work with her, do some new moon rituals, and set my 2023 goals into motion. And while it was a sunny weekend, the air was actually pretty cool and provided for the perfect day of a crackling fire in my fireplace and some hearth magic. I lit my kitchen candle, as I always do on the weekends, and on Sunday I had a small simmer pot going that allowed me the time and you know space to breathe in the wonderful aromas of rosemary, lemon, and cinnamon while I did some more reading in my book. The second thing um, was some work on my upcoming health journey. Now, if you've not been following my podcast or listened to previous episodes, I have been going through some girl stuff over the past couple of years. I am certainly in the stage of life where this is normal, but what I have been experiencing was very exaggerated and was not normal. So it prompted going to a specialist. Um, So I saw a gynecological oncologist who did an exam, um, found something not right, We did an ultrasound and ultimately took a biopsy of the mass in question. So the results came back negative for cancer, which I'm so happy about, but the size of the tumor has led to the scheduling of a surgery. So I'm hoping it will take place on Wednesday, February 8th. Um, This is not an elective surgery, so I don't have much say on the date, Um, but it was scheduled for Monday the 6th. And after looking at the the moon schedule coming up, um, it actually is still a full moon on the 6th. So I'm very hopeful I can move it to Wednesday when the moon is waning. Um, Waning moons are the perfect time for surgery, especially when you are removing something. So for this past weekend, I worked with the amazing super new moon energy. I really took time to center myself. Um, I cast a circle and I did some energy work with the elements um, to not only get my 2023 goals in motion, which coincidentally are all centered around balance and health, uh, but also set some intention for the upcoming hysterectomy and hospital stay. So the third was a card draw. Uh, Normally I do a two card pull and, you know, keep it pretty simple. But this time I did a three card pull and focused on, you know, direction for my 2023 goals. I was able to do this as part of my elemental work in my casted circle. And I feel really good about the animals that came forward and the reminders, yes, and the, and the reminders they are giving me um, to help bring my goals to completion. So on a three card poll with my um, amazing animal oracle deck, uh, the first card shows me what I need to know about the situation for my highest good. The second card shows me what my next right step is to stay in alignment with my highest intentions. And then the third card shows where this could evolve if I remain on this path. So My first card was the electric eel spirit, which says to bring my ideas to life. Uh, Oh my goodness, like how how perfect. I got the biggest smile on my face when I saw that and read up on what that spirit animal means. So what do I need to know about my 2023 goals for my highest good? Well, I was told by the eel, the electric eel, that um, epiphanies and aha moments are gifted to me right now and to celebrate that my life has the potential for profound transformation and inspiration arises in me. This energy will bring to life my ideas with love, success, and abundance. So the second card poll was the pig spirit, which tells me to use my mind wisely. So what do I need to know about my next right step to stay in alignment? Well, the pig spirit says that I need to use the intelligence I have with love, compassion, and discernment. Intelligent Um, Intelligence means recognizing the value of intuition and partnering it with smarts and common sense. 
So I am to respect my analytical mind and use it for the highest good. So the third was the parrot spirit, which says to watch my words. Now this card shows me, you know, where things could evolve if I remain on this path. And the parrot reminds me to be careful what I'm saying to myself. What messages am I repeating? Are they ones that make me feel good about myself and bring me towards my goals? Or are they ones that bring me back into a cycle of doubt and away from my goals? So words matter, and I am to choose what I say to myself carefully. All right, the moon status this week. The beautiful moon this week is in her waxing crescent phase, which is a great time for planning and success. It is a time to put your dreams and goals into motion and set your intentions. This is a fresh beginning time and working from the you know, energy of the new moon last week, it's a perfect time to refine your new year's goals and visualize them growing and coming true. Okay, let's jump into today's topic all about in bulk. So part of my witchy work wishes is drawing topics from my own wish list. In you know, refining and defining my own personal practice in more detail, I have been searching for ways to bring a little witchcraft into my office and work. I didn't find a bunch of guidance on this when I was researching, so really out of my own needs, witchy work wishes was created. I really wanted to document my work, so podcasts seem to be the best avenue for that. And I'm hopeful that if you are also looking for ways <laughs> to bring a little magic into your job, that these podcasts will help. So celebrating the wheel of the year is part of my 2023 goals. There are certainly parts I'm very familiar with and have celebrated my whole life. And then there are parts that I am aware of, maybe have done you know a couple things with them, but certainly don't have the familiarity with them like I do the others. So I think if I'm able to bring more of the seasons and festivals into my work, I think I'll balance everything just a little bit better. I'm hopeful. <laughs> All right, so in bulk is part of the pagan wheel of the year and is listed as the calendar date or you know dates of February 1st and 2nd. It is directly across on the calendar from Lunasa, which celebrates the harvest, which is the exact opposite of in bulk and the planting. So in bulk is represented by a candle and the goddess Brigid, who I mentioned in last week's episode about elemental fire. It's also known as Candlemas Day and St. Brigid's Day. It is one of the four seasonal festivals on the Wheel of the Year and pretty much marks the halfway point between winter and spring. I know it may not feel like that for, <laughs> for a lot of people who are knee deep in snow and certainly in the coldest part of their winter, but in bulk does mark the beginning signs that spring is coming. All right, quick little side note, which I always like to poke in there. Uh, for many of us, we are going to think of February 2nd and Groundhog's Day. Um, I think the movie with Bill Murray and Annie McDowell is super, super cute. If you've not seen it, the movie takes place in um, Puxtoni, Pennsylvania, where Bill Murray's character keeps repeating the same day over and over and over again until he learns his lesson and is allowed to move forward. So the tradition of Groundhog's Day um, actually started with German settlers back in the 1700s who brought with them the tradition of Candlemas Day, right, also in bulk, uh, for the Germans, though, uh, Candlemas Day was the midpoint between the winter and spring solstice. And their tradition said that if the 2nd of February was a sunny day and the hedgehog could see his shadow, there would be six more weeks of winter. Now, in Pennsylvania, where the Germans settled, there were no hedgehogs. So they adopted the groundhog since it also um, wintered underground. The groundhog would the groundhog, excuse me, would look up um, to see a shadow and forecast their coming months. Now, one may think that a sunny day would indicate spring is near, not necessarily another six weeks of winter, but the tradition said that the day would be bright, um, so a lot of wood could be gathered to keep them warm during the cold winter weeks that are coming since there would be another six weeks of them. And the hedgehog would actually not come out at all from his underground home if spring was coming because he was still in his winter's den sleeping and winter would soon end. So Imbolc is a Celtic holiday and has a handful of symbols uh, representing it. We have the sun, which represents, you know, warmer days coming, light and new life beginning. We have candles, which represent hope, life and creativity. 
Uh, we have fire, which we talked about last week. Fire represents transformation. Um, we have Brigid's cross, and her cross is uh, made with strands of grass and represents protection, fire, goodness, and lightning. <laughs> um, we have a broom. Um, a broom is a symbol of imbolc because it represents fertility, abundance, and cleansing. Uh, we have water, uh, which represents emotions, cleansing, healing, and psychic abilities. For imbolc, we have burrowing animals, which are um, going to be our you know, groundhog, our hedgehog, badger, and bear. Of course, we can't think about the coming spring without thinking of flowers. Uh, for imbolc, we have white flowers, uh, which are a symbol of new beginnings, beauty, waking life, and love. And then lambs are also a symbol of imbolc, and they represent youth, innocence, and gentle energy. So imbolc is Brigid's Day. She is the great mother a goddess of Ireland and is represented by an eternal flame. Brigid is uh, known as a triple goddess of three sister selves, the Lady of Healing Waters, representing the water element, the goddess of the sacred flame, representing the fire element, and the goddess of the fertile earth, representing the earth element. Brigid's symbol, and thus one of the main symbols of Imbolc, is her cross, which is reeds, long reeds of grass tied together and crossed. It's not a religious cross. Brigid's tied reeds of grass are from ancient Celtic times and were honored long before Christianity formed. Um, Brigid is known for having nine gifts, which are poetry, reflections, meditation, lore, research, knowledge, intelligence, comprehension, and wisdom. All right, celebrating in bulk in the witchcraft community. So this comes in many forms, and really those forms are going to be unique and individual to you. That individuality, I can say from the bottom of my heart, is one of the many reasons I love our community so much. You get to do you. <laughs> so certainly though, um, using any of the traditional in bulk symbols to celebrate the holiday in your rituals is going to be a good place to start. Uh, if you have in the past made candles yourself or the ability to make your own candles, celebrating the element of fire and the in bulk symbol of the candle is going to be um, generating some amazing energy. You can always dress them with herbs and crystals and anoint them with essential oils. We can celebrate in bulk by making our own reeds of grass cross that represent Brigitte's cross. Um, if we hang it outside on our front door, this will invite Brigid's energy to protect our home. Um, if you do this, be sure to get it hung up by the 31st of January. So her symbol um, of the cross is about endurance through times of the you know darkness and winter. It symbolizes protection for our homes um, when we hang it either on the door or in our window. And it also symbolizes protection for our animals when placed in the barns. It helps to ensure the cows will have plenty of milk. So if you have space uh, available and can create an altar for Imbolc or even add some Imbolc um, items to your altar, good things to use will be anything that honors Brigid. Her grass cross, of course, a broom, candles, lots and lots of candles, <laughs> um, a picture of Brigid, uh, maybe corn dollies, and of course, any of the Imbolc symbols like, you know, like the sun, burrowing animals, flowers, and lambs. Since we just finished Yule, and that comes with a bunch of decorating and traditions of its own, which I love, but it is a lot, um, I'm sure we can all relate to the deep desire to clean and freshen our spaces right now. A nice ritual that we'll celebrate in bulk is doing a ritual cleaning of our homes. You know, we can take the symbol of the broom and not only use it symbolically for the celebration, but use it literally in the practice of our cleansing rituals. So we are getting rid of anything right now that is negative or old, and we are welcoming, welcoming in the spring, uh, new life and energy. So since in bulk is associated with fire, having a fire in your fireplace or outside in a fire pit would be perfect. Um, if you can't go back and listen to last week's uh, episode about fire, I talk about a bunch of options for working with that element. Hearth magic would be great during in bulk. Uh, in bulk is also associated with water though, um, and you can pull the December episode about water if you want more options there too. But even just going to a stream or a river, or if, the, if you're by an ocean, um, during in bulk would raise that water energy. 
Uh, let's see, if you're a green witch, or even if you're not and you enjoy gardening, <laughs> uh, in bulk is a perfect time to start your seeds or even to plan out your spring garden. For most everyone, regardless of where you geographically live, you'll probably want to plant your seeds inside so you can control the elements and you know give your seeds and seedlings a good loving start. So this is honoring new life and new beginnings that are coming. And since the earth is waking up again, planting seeds and you know giving that gentle love to the earth will bring the spirit of Imbolc to your home. For our kitchen witches, Brigid is often shown with a cauldron, so any type of work with your iron cauldron will be great during Imbolc. Since spring is all about seeds and the starting of life, cooking with seeds is good during Imbolc. Uh, specifically, or specifically, excuse me, if you're making bread, um, adding seeds into your bread or maybe topping it with seeds will bring that energy um, into your into your kitchen work. Muffins or scones will also be good in our kitchen workings for Imbolc. The biggest ingredient for Imbolc is going to be milk. So milk is tied to this festival because it represents fertility, life, and abundance. So the word Imbolc actually means in the belly. And refers to the growing of life, just like, you know, a baby grows in its mother. And it's this powerful ingredient that gives sustenance and life to their babies. So anything that works with dairy and milk are going to be good for in bulk. I know ritual baths are somewhat generic in our practice, but if you don't, um, if you don't have the option of cooking or baking with milk, um, you can certainly put some milk into your ritual baths um, and do something special for in bulk with it. So I know I mentioned candles, but another good idea is to take your 2023 goals and have a white candle represent each one of them. You know, place the white candles in a circle, again, one for each goal, and light them, giving life and energy to your intentions. You can say your goals out loud and use a little candle magic to help them uh, come to life. Just as spring shows life, you know, stirring again after months of hibernation and rest, you can kind of bring that energy and life to your goals as well and put them into action. So lastly, I have poetry um, as a great in bulk tradition that you can certainly incorporate into your practice. This is something that I have always loved doing, um, even back to when I was little, but I do appreciate the complexity of poetry and how it just might not come naturally <laughs> to others. A tip, if it's not flowing, you know, the words and thoughts are not coming to, you know, naturally to you, set it down and try again later and come back to it. Poetry is something very special to Brigid and honors the celebrations of Imbolc. So, of course, at the end, I have a poem about Imbolc just for you. Okay, what about bringing the element of Imbolc into our work? So, this always gets a little tricky because I take the path of keeping my office fairly neutral. I am a closet witch, but honestly, even if I wasn't, I still would not want my office full of obvious, you know, witchy things, just as much as I wouldn't want an office full of obvious religious things. Uh, what we do in our personal lives is separate from work. And in keeping the work environment neutral, it's important to appeal, for me, to appeal to uh, as broad of a group of people as possible. So I personally like having an inviting office that appeals to just about everyone, you know, regardless of religion, sex, politics, personal beliefs, whatever. I am open for business. What you do in your own time is up to you. If you're here to work, let's do it. <laughs> So with all that said, my goal, of course, with this specific podcast is to find a way to bring witchy things into my office so I feel more at home, but also keep my office neutral, which brings us right back to the tricky part. <laughs> so if you're new to this podcast, I always end with um, you know ways to bring the main topic into the office in inconspicuous ways. So let's do it. How can we bring in bulk into our office, job and work? without setting the alarm button off. So the first one I have is to clean. You know, you may not be able to use a witchy broom for this, but in bulk is all about new beginning, um, fresh starts and a clean space. So use this time to tidy up your desk and organize. This is not a time to have things left over from last year or piles of papers or you know whatever it is you do at your job um, lingering over from past. Do a full cleaning and a cleansing, if you can, of your office space. And even though you know spring has not officially begun, we do need to wait for March 21st for that to happen, but you can still do your spring cleaning at the office now. Second is to have white flowers at your desk. So in bulk has both the fire and the water element. So you can have a beautiful uh, bundle of white peony in a vase at, uh, at your desk. 
I know I mentioned this before, but the peony flower, especially the white peony, is my most favorite flower. So I will personally be doing this very step at my own desk at work. A uh, third is to light a candle. And I know this one is hard and many corporate offices are not going to let you have an open flame at your desk, but if you can, light a candle. In bulk is represented by a candle, and this is a powerful way to celebrate it. You can always use a battery powder, uh, powered candle to replace the open flame too. Fourth, I have, um, you know, if you can, make your own Brigid's Cross for the office. Instead of using long strands of grass, which is the traditional way, you can use paper from your office and fold it. Fifth, I always like kitchen magic for work. I really do enjoy baking with love at home and then bringing the baked goods into the office for my staff to enjoy. In bulk is a great time to do this. By baking bread um, with seeds or making maybe poppy seed muffins for everyone, you can really bring that element of in bulk and your kitchen magic to work. Or if you're a big salad eater, you can bring some seeds during in bulk to add to your lunch salads. Of course, we can always wear clothes and you know have the colors of in bulk or even jewelry with stones and crystals. Our colors will be pink, um, red, yellow, and gold. And our stones and crystals will be any of your red stones like garnet and bloodstone and any of your cleansing crystals. Now, if you have a diffuser in your office or if you're able to make your own you know, office spray you uh, with essential oils, look for rosemary, cinnamon, frankincense, basil, vanilla, wisteria, and myrrh. Okay, so normally I like to um, make a list of things that summarize the topic. And I did a quick recap this time since many of the items are repeated so much <laughs> throughout the podcast already. So for Imbolc, Imbolc is a part of the pagan wheel year and is listed as the calendar date or dates of February 1st and February 2nd. It is directly across from Lunasa, which celebrates the harvest, which is the exact opposite of Imbolc and the planting. Imbolc is represented by a candle and the goddess Brigid, who I mentioned in last week's episode about the elemental fire. It is also known as Candlemas Day and St. Brigid's Day. Brigid is the great mother goddess of Ireland and is represented by an eternal flame. Imbolc is one of the four seasonal festivals on the Will of the Year and pretty much marks the halfway point between winter and spring. Imbolc is a Celtic holiday with a handful of symbols, including the sun, candles, fire, a broom, water, burring animals, um, flowers, and lambs. Uh, celebrating in bulk in our witching community is very personal, but it can include making your own candles, making your own Brigid's Cross, baking bread with seeds, cauldron magic, candle magic, really any type of fire magic, um, planting seeds and drafting your you know spring garden layout, altar dedication to in bulk and Brigid, writing poetry, using milk and dairy in your kitchen magic and bath rituals, and then setting your 2023 goals and intentions with white candle magic. Now, bringing in bulk into our work and you know jobs and office, I have you know clean. Again, you may not be able to use a witchy broom for this, but in bulk is all about new beginnings and fresh starts in a clean space. You can have a vase of white peony flowers at your desk, light an office candle, make your own Brigid's Cross for the office. Um, again, instead of using long strands of grass, Go ahead and use a paper from your office and fold it. Kitchen magic for work, um, bring in baked goods for everyone to enjoy. Add seeds to your office lunch, uh, your lunch salad during in bulk. Of course, wear clothes that have colors of in bulk, red, pink, yellow, and gold, and wear jewelry with our stones and crystal garnets, um, bloodstone, and any of our cleansing crystals. So fill your office diffuser or room spray with essential oils. Look for rosemary, cinnamon, frankincense, basil, vanilla, wisteria, and myrrh. Okay, I did write a poem for today's podcast, so here we go. The air is crisp and the days are cold. Though spring is coming, we are told. In bulk's energy is what we feel as we celebrate our pagan wheel. Brigid has her eternal flame and represents the in bulk name. With sun and candles, water and fire, she holds within what we desire. Brigid's cross protects our home and our furry animals as they roam. We use our broom to cleanse and clean and plant our seeds to watch them green. Imbolc is the time of year to wish for spring that's almost here. 
to celebrate with cauldron work, a loaf of bread, and a happy smirk. For we all know the power inside, as our workings are a magical guide. This time of year we look ahead, we light our candles and bake our bread. In bulk sets our goals in motion, a recipe of our personal potion. As we celebrate our pagan's wheel, in bulk's energy is what we feel. Well, thank you for joining me today. Next week's podcast is all about rings on our fingers. And I snuck this one in because I'm just super curious to do more work on it and how I can bridge that into my office as well. So that is all I have for you this week. I will talk with you next week. Thank you for joining me today at Witchy Work Wishes, a place to find your weekly inspiration for bringing your personal witchcraft practice into your business, work, and office. For more information and additional content, please visit me online at witchyworkwishes.com. If you want to send me a personal note, please email me at info at witchyworkwishes.com. And of course, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Just search for Witchy Work Wishes.